so staff can get home before curfew? Yeah, I think there's a bit of a leniency. It's more for the customers to get home before curfew. Yeah. Mm. Oh, true. Yes. Yeah, staff will have them. a permit. Yeah. Mm. All right. I'm going to chuck everyone. If you guys can mute yourself, actually, just mute everyone really briefly. Okay. Mute everyone. There we go. Ah, uh, cool. So, as you guys know, Dan Andrews made a big kerfuffle about exercising outdoors um, when it came to the stage four restrictions. And I thought this was actually quite a good time to actually bring up the points of why walking is just not enough in this time, especially um, considering what we've actually gone through in the, over the last, oh, was it since March, the, since the lockdown, so about four months at least. And, and why we need to kind of think of exercise as not just as a stroll around the block or going to the park with the kids or anything like that. It needs to be some, some level of structure behind it because eventually it's going to get to the point where we do get caught out when it comes to our health and fitness. And when we do return back to or some level of normality, which could be in the next six weeks, could be in the next 10 weeks or 12 weeks, we don't want to see this, this um, steady decline in our health and this is kind of like what kind of shitted me up the wall was this hour of exercise per day outdoors where really if we should be focusing on trying to exert ourselves as well it, for all the other health um positive health outcomes we can actually get from physical activity and even high intensity activity relative to the individual we're talking about so what's happening we know in stage four uh, karen's in stage three at the moment um, and obviously one hour of exercise is permitted. They kind of were weird about the rules as well. So they said it's, it's up to, an, you can only be out for an hour a day. That includes also shopping as well, which I don't know how they're going to regulate that. It's just a weird rule. Um, can't use the playgrounds. Um, I think beaches are also a bit of a hot spot where they're going to start yelling at people and the cops are going to start patrolling those areas as well. Um, the St. Kilda Foreshore, there was a shocking photo. It was like, thousands of people along the boardwalk um I don't, I don't know how like i know it's densely populated but it's yeah it's definitely not a good look for the area i also calculated as well that about an hour of walking is about seven thousand steps so we do set a golden rule when it comes to more health related outcomes or if you're trying to lose a little bit of weight we want to aim for an actual goal of ten thousand steps so Right here, that hour of walking, it depends on how fast you're going as well in that hour, um, also the terrain as well. You probably you may not even reach that mark, and especially if you're working behind the desk from nine to five, you know, you roll out of bed, walk 10 metres to grab your coffee, then walk 10 metres into the office. You know, that's only like 20, 30 steps right there. Um, then you probably sit on your ass for most of the time as well. So we need to find ways in order to increase the in intensity, but also the frequency of our physical activity as well. Um, and also limiting our time outside. And I think this is really potentially dangerous. And Karen could probably um, mention something about this later on is, you know, when we do limit ourselves in terms of being outside, we actually limit ourselves from um, uh, attaining vitamin D from the sunlight. So our body converts sunlight into vitamin D um, and it's actually our main source of vitamin D. Now, personally, I went to the US uh, when it was summer here, it was winter over there. And about a month later, I actually suffered um, seasonal depression. It was it was terrible, sleep was bad. Um, I, sleep, I was just tired and fatigued all, out, all throughout the day. And I see this actually potentially happening um, especially for those who are stuck in stage four and for those who don't usually go outside. Oh, hi, Alotta. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, and those who are stuck indoors all that time, we really got to try and make sure that we're getting outside and really making the most of the sunlight, especially in the middle of the day when the, shine, the sun is shining the, the brightest. This is, this is the best time to get the vitamin D in as well. Got sunlight in to get to it vitamin D ourselves. Um, we're at home more, more now than ever in history as well. So most of us would actually commute to work. So we actually go from home. Some of you guys would train in the morning. Um, then you'd go back home and maybe commute to work or do some sort of like semi um, part-time um, commuting um, to work. Um, and where 
we're really restricting it in terms of our movement. So we're more likely to stay indoors. And now we've got all these reward systems as well that are kitchens nearby. We got Netflix, we got Facebook, we got Instagram. We got all these services that actually for, actually rely on us just sitting on our ass. And that's when we're the, we're the most inclined to kind of bite and continue to sit on our ass and kind of ne- begin to neglect our health. And it's a, it's, a, it's, a sli- it's a very slippery slope, but it's not very um, harsh. But if you do it too often, you're stuck in the cycle and it can be a lot hard to break and actually work your way back up into improving your health um, as a result. And I think what the government potentially should have done is actually set out some health related goals. Um, My thought behind this was let's encourage, rather than be like, look, the restrictions, you know, if people feel locked in, locked down at the moment, my thought was potentially the um, chief health officer could potentially set up some health related goals or put out some resources on how people can actually set some goals when it came to their health when it came to eating some good food or the, you know, some good food, some basic guidelines, um, some potential physical activity and some resources to actually help people to maintain some level of fitness at home for those who aren't doing any training or were training and stopped um, or ceased training um, during this time. Um, so I actually thought that was quite interesting. They told us what we can't do, can't do, can't do. And it's like, and then this tiny window of what we can do when they should have focused on making that window window of what we can do a little bit larger at the end of the day. All right, so what's the goal? What's ke- keeping ourselves healthy so our body can deal with the following? And now I've been on Instagram quite a bit now because um, it's, it's actually quite interesting to read some of the comments of some posts that are quite contentious. Um, but I think the main thing is, is actually our immune system should be something that we should keep in tip top shape. Um, and the way we actually do that is good sleep, eating well, um, physical activity, um, being on top. If we are, uh, if we're always stressed all the time, like, like, ne- like distress, there's two types of stress is you stress, which is positive stress, kind of like strain on the body, then distress, which is more the negative stress. And if we've got too much distress in our system, uh, and that can actually, increase the likelihood of illness and disease or contracting illness and disease. So, and getting sunlight as well. So we know vitamin D is really important. We know it's actually um, related to our mental health as well. So best to really try and find ways to improve your immune system during this time. And and it's not about spending 24 seven on this. It's about doing incremental bits um, during the day um, with that one. Um, we remain fully functional and won't pick up any muscular. Um, if we remain fully functional, I kind of misspelt the sentence. Um, if we remain fully functional, we won't pick up any musculoskeletal injuries. So, um, from a lack of strength and mobility post COVID, when we return back to our normal life. So, what I really mean by that is, right, if we're sitting on our ass more than usual, which you know, um, I can put my hand up and. I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm sitting on ass more than usual. And I think Rosalind's putting her hand up as well. <laughs> um, it's, it's very easy to actually see your body. Um, it's almost like devolve. Now, what I mean by that devolving or regressing is we see a decrease in our muscle mass. We see an increase in our, our fat mass. We also see a potential decrease in our bone density as well. So bone density is really critical because if you do go back to normal activities and you don't feel as good as you did pre-COVID, you know, trips, falls or anything like that, especially for the, for the oldies here, this is when we get into a potential trap. You know, if we fall on our hip, we break our hip, then it's potentially downhill. It's downhill very quickly if you get a broken hip, especially in the older age as well. So it's more about mitigating the potential risk later on down the track than anything else. And most of us, when in, well, in your golden years, you want to be enjoying life to the fullest. You know, you worked really hard you know, for X amount of years, X amount of decades. Now's the time to kind of, you know, you know uh, reap what you sowed for many years. So let's try and get to the point where you can really enjoy it and not have to feel like you're held back by, you know, whatever it is, a lower back issue, shoulder issue, hip issue, whatever it may be. Uh, 
we also need to focus on keeping our, our mental health in a positive state. So this doesn't have to be anything fancy or anything like that. But if we're positive, um, we don't have to be all up and chirpy and, yeah, and all that jazz. But I think we need to make sure that we're uh, mental health, we're communicating with other people, we're making sure that we're getting some regular exercise. All these factors actually lead into improving our mental health. So we're less likely to make some negative choices in this time. And when we make, when we're less likely to make negative choices, we're less likely to go for the, the small, those things that kind of perk us up really quickly. So alcohol is number one, that kind of people go to sugary treats as well. You know, if you're feeling down or crappy, you know, you're going to go you know, eat a pack of lollies or something like that, or some chocolate or something like that, or for some people's cheese, just to kind of boost up their mood really quickly. So we've got to make sure that we're putting systems in place that we're continuing to build and develop our mental health throughout this time. Um, there's a lot of strain um, at the moment. Um, now, I wanted to kind of go on, on on this analogy that a lot of the Qantas planes are actually put into storage, the long-term storage and short-term storage. Now, if we... So with the planes right at the moment, they actually have to be ran on a regular basis. So if they're not ran on a regular basis, they're going to have mass... They're going to have to replace a lot of the parts and when things don't work. So it's like our cars as well, where we have to use our car frequently and regularly to make sure that it's actually moving and functioning well. And this is the same with the human body. We can't afford to stop now just because of a short period of time. We have to find ways in order to keep moving, lift weights, you know, you know, move through a full range of motion, be able to do split squats, whatever it may be, eating well during this time. So when we do go back to, um, you know, 50%, 80% or 90% of your, of what you did beforehand, then we can actually start to move forward in what you need to. Otherwise, if we go down and the planes weren't being used, A, it's gonna cost a lot more money, B, you're gonna strike some real big problems later on down the track just because from the lack of use. And C, it's actually, it's actually more of a burden. It's more cumbersome now. So it's kind of like we're leading ourselves into this false dichotomy of, oh yeah, I'll kind of sort it out later. It's like, that's the kind of the wrong mentality um, during this whole process. And there's going to be thousands and thousands of people like, nah, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to hang, hang up everything for six weeks and see what happens. Like, that's kind of the wrong mentality here. We just need to do something in order to keep everything working, keep the parts moving, move through, move through full range of motion, eat enough protein, eat regular meals, go to sleep at, at our normal times, keep everything structured. So when things do go back and start to pick up a little bit more, you can really take advantage of those times and really get out there and do what you want to at the end of the day because it's going to be a lot harder because you're going to try to fix things when, when things are getting good. So you kind of go downhill, but then everything else is going up um, during that time. All right, so... The physical activity and sedentary behavior guidelines. So physical activity is anything, um, well, basically, this is from the Department of Health. They say any physical activity is better than doing none. So if you currently do no physical activity, start by doing some and gradually build up uh, to the recommended amount, which is um, just below. We'll go through that really quickly. Um, we want to be active on most, preferably all days, uh, preferably all days of every week. Now, what that really means is we want to accumulate 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous physical activity. Um, or we need some sort of equivalent. So you might do a bit of both at the end of the day. Um, they do suggest to actually doing um, muscle strength based work twice a week. And this is actually just to maintain your health. Anything else? Just to maintain. So if you're doing less than this, more than likely you're potentially going down the slippery slope at the end of the day. So we want to try and mitigate um, mitigate that slippery slope as much as possible, and pump brakes and go back up the other way. So when it comes to moderate physical activity, it's basically like cleaning, um, mowing the lawns. It could be gardening. It could be walking the dog. Uh, it could be just, you know, having a kick with a footy, just something that's not even like really strenuous, doesn't really spike your heart rate in any regard. Um, 
that it's comfortable that you can hold a pretty easy, or you can hold a conversation the whole time. Anything that's vigorous is where you struggle to hold a conversation um, or you, uh, like you struggle to string a couple of words together properly. Uh, that's when you start to become more out of breath. Um, and the strength training, targeting all muscle groups at least twice a week with some progressive overload each week as well. Now, why is it not enough to just walk? Now, we adapt to what we expose or don't expose ourselves to. Now, what this whole idea is, we adapt to our environments, right? So if you, if you look at, um, I guess, if you look at um, endurance athletes, they, adapt, they adapt to their environment. So for those, um, because they do long endurance events, their body mass is actually quite low because they need to be able to cover long distances, otherwise they're wasting a lot of energy. So they, they adapt to their actual event or what they expose themselves to. Whilst if you've got someone on the other end who's a, a shot putter or something like that, they're a big, burly dude. They might be an absolute barrel of a guy or a girl, but their job is to ultimately heave a shot put, which is about between, uh, I think it's between four and seven kilos, as far as they can and they have up to six attempts so their job is to move this this small object that's quite dense as far as possible so they adapt to be strong and explosive but they're not going to be very good at endurance events so you really adapt to what happens another example would be if you give it a, a, a walking frame to someone who requires some level of assistance what actually happens is over time, if they first get their walking frame, they're, they're not too bad in terms of their posture. But what you actually start to notice, they actually become more cathodic, so more rounded head, head and eye line starts to go down, 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 down. And they start looking more and more towards the ground. And that's what happens when you adapt what you expose, you expose yourself to. Because there's nothing on, all their weight has shifted forward, there was nothing on the backside to try and keep them upright, to keep them somewhat balanced. They just become totally adapted to the walking frame and they become so reliant on the walking frame over time. Now, if we did strength training twice a week and versus zero times a week, strength training twice a week is going to help us at least maintain some level of strength, same, some level of muscle mass as well. Um, it's also going to have some other, other effects on our health as well. And if we did from two times a week to zero times a week, we're going to start to see our ability to control our body mass. It's going to be a lot harder to be able to do that. So strength training is actually a really good way to actually control our body weight at the end of the day. The body relies on working hard and exerting itself. Now, I've mentioned this a few times when it comes to sleeping. And what I really mean by this is if your body ain't working hard or your mind ain't working hard during the day, it doesn't build up this product, this product in the brain. It's called adenosine. And adenosine is what helps create sleep pressure. The higher the pressure, the more likely you want to fall asleep. Now, a lack of sleep pressure impacts your sleep quality. So you're going to be more, more awake. You're probably be more restless to try and fall asleep. You're just not going to be comfortable and not going to have a good night's sleep. So we really need to find ways that we can actually spike our heart rate, get ourselves, exert ourselves, build up into ourselves into a little bit of a sweat um, in order to actually help us sleep. And it's really important. You kind of go down one end, and the body wants to go down the other end because it wants to rest and recover and get a good night's sleep. Um, why work walking is just not enough and like i mentioned before in the first point is a loss of muscle mass and strength and, and this is more of an issue in the un, under trained and older adult population but a lack of loading through the body and low sun exposure is actually going to decrease your bone density so we actually need weights to actually load up a skeletal system in order to maintain our bone density um, through, throughout this whole period and unfortunately, a lot of people aren't going to have the access or the understanding or the, um, in order to actually be able to move them forward in the right direction um, to get an appropriate program, to be able to load up the joints, be able to load up um, the, the bones as well. So they're making sure that we get um, 
maintaining our bone density during this time. When things do return back to normal, when the gyms do open back up, then we can return back to some, maybe 75 to 80% capacity of what they were able to do pre-COVID. Um, the structure of high intensity um, training is helpful to regulate our appetite as well. So it actually helps to reduce overeating than um, anything else. Um, and also helps to release serotonin, which is our feel good uh, neurotransmitter in our brain. Um, and this also helps with our um, happy, our feeling happy at the end of the day. Um, but also, if we're feeling happy, we're gonna feel good. And when we feel good, we make better decisions as well um, from the high intensity training. So whenever you've done like high intensity work, usually we feel pretty darn good afterwards. So we achieved it, the endorphins are running high, which is really good. Um, then we make some, then we usually make good choices. Unfortunately, for those who don't do high intensity training, and, and I've kind of seen this in the past, they don't work hard enough, usually they're more likely to overeat. They kind of, it's almost like they know they need to eat well, but if you get them into the state where you get this high release of serotonin, they're more likely to make a better decision on their food. And I've, this is more, um, more anecdotal than anything else. I've never seen anyone go to a bucket of ice cream after a high intensity training session. I just, <laughs> I just ne never really seen that happen. And a lot is just like, yeah, I haven't seen that. <laughs> it doesn't really happen. But if you're, if you're doing like a race or something like that, that's really hard and high intensity. Um, for example, like a lot of does, then, you know, going out and celebrate and have a lunch, that's a different story. But on a regular basis is what I'm talking about. All right, so what we can do, so I'm just going to move this quickly. Okay, cool. So you can still walk, but we need to include a little bit more to it and make it a bit more of a robust program than anything else. So we're covering a lot of bases here um, based on the actual guidelines as well. So what I actually came up with is just a general framework than anything else, which can actually be manipulated quite easily based on the weather, based on what you have access to, based on your work schedule. Um, it's just a real simple way. And I've actually used this for a couple of um, people that I coach as well. So it's actually worked um, quite nicely. You kind of just slot in the things that you want to do um, as well. I'd actually give you a quick pointer. If you want to go for a walk, go call a friend. You'll notice the walk goes a lot faster as well. And you probably enjoy the walk um, and also um, during that time. But what we need to include, we need to include some two strength sessions a week, um, a minimum, and they don't have to be long or strenuous or anything crazy. I just put in 45 minutes, so 15 minute warm up and 30 minutes of actually just focusing on strength work, hitting all the muscle groups, hitting all the main movements, pushing, pulling, split squats, get some sort of deadlift, some sort of basic core work, dead bugs or something like that. At least we're covering all bases um, with that one. We're not going too specific anywhere um, at the end of the day. Um, I did say yoga, and the reason why I said yoga is okay as long as it's more based on actually trying to hold positions for time. Um, it's more strength-based um, to a point. And the trick with yoga, sometimes it's, it can be too much of just stretching than anything else. It's a bit passive, so I need to be active than anything else. So holding, you know, warrior one, chaturanga, um, these are the kind of the poses positions I'd rather see people in rather than just kind of like more just the stretching component than anything else. And and free weights, that's fine. Uh, body, weights, body weight as well. So we can do plenty of things with body weight. We can modify push-ups, we can modify split squats. There's so many things we can actually do in order to make our training actually quite effective at the end of the day. Um, I said two high-intensity training sessions per week, and I actually kept these really short. Um, for example, it could be intervals, circuits, Tabata, anything that kind of provokes or spikes up the heart rate and anything else. Um, and I kind of put these on the days where you'd actually do strength on, focus on strength on one day and then focus on more like high intensity work or interval based work on another day. Um, circuits could be anything. You could be do like a weight circuit. Um, if you don't have access to weights, um, just like a simple body weight circuit could be enough as well. I've also prescribed isometric circuits where you just hold it like a lunge position for time, hold a push-up position for time, hold a plank position for time. Those types of circuits where you're just holding positions 
can actually be quite challenging. And you notice that your heart rate does spike quite quickly with that one. And Lotta knows about the split squats. Karen knows about the split squats. I think Roslyn's done some split squats as well in the past um, to the hold. And I've, oops. And I've included five low intensity um, days or low to moderate days. Um, th this is more just more just to get outside, to become physically active, and just to kind of get the blood flow and actually start and focus on the recovery component as well, but also potentially just getting your mind right for when you do the strength stuff in the afternoon as well. Now, I do understand that obviously people's timetables do vary and this is just a framework just for someone who does work nine to five. It's, it's not hard to get a 30 minute walk in before, um, right after breakfast before you have to start your nine, you know, start work for nine o'clock. And 30 minutes of yoga at night is probably going to actually um, make, make the individual feel good because you've got to focus on your breathing at the same time as well. And you actually feel a lot better that your body's worked hard, harder than it normally would during the day. So then we incre increase the sleep pressure, so therefore you get a better night's sleep as well. So the, doing a program or a structure like this, it kind of ticks a lot of boxes in terms of actually look, uh, feeling good. Um, keeping the body moving and in shape. So we're not like a, a plane in, in the graveyard that's just art, just sitting there, kind of just rotting away and nothing's really working. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, when we do come out of this and look, at the end of the day, we will come out of this, just no one knows when specifically, is we want to make sure that, sure that when everything starts to open up, that we're actually starting to open up and do a little bit more as well, that we can feel good, that we can participate, we can do all the things, we can connect with friends, go see them, go for coffees, you know, play golf. We want to do a golf day you know, for an athlete as well. Um, that was really enjoyable. But yeah, we just want to kind of um, set the groundwork for when we do come out of this. And that is pretty much it. So a nice short one for tonight. What I'll do is you guys can unmute yourselves. There we go. All right, cool. All right, Rosalind, what did you think? What did you think of the um, of the webinar? Well, I thought it was very good. I've been, I don't know whether you know or not, but I'm working from home now. I'm on the phones all day. So that's why I'm sitting on my tush all day long, which is not ideal and I don't enjoy it either. But I have started, I have a 10 minute break in the morning and a 10 minute break in the noon. So I have started to just do a quick walk around the block and all that sort of stuff in those 10 minutes. So I'm starting, but I've, I, thought the webinar was very good but I was just googling Tabata because I've never heard of Tabata when you you mentioned that and I just sort of googled that and thought what on earth is Tabata never even heard of it but thought that's high intensity so I don't know if it's you know a my thing or not but yes I think you have to get a little bit more for upper body I know walk because I've been doing a lot of walking I know I've sort of thinking well upper body and all that sort of stuff is not happening with that sort of thing so there you go so that's yeah. my feelings mm. yeah and we're gonna have a discussion about that as well how we incorporate some mm. level of upper body strength work mm. uh, into, into just your daily routine yeah well that's right i can do that i could po hopefully do that i don't know what's going to happen but <laughs> just getting off the chair at the moment and getting out and about at the moment so because i'm working from getting, home have you tried getting a stand-up desk i can get a stand-up desk but um i'm limited for funds like i've um yeah. my company's only allowed you know like a hundred dollars for a stand-up desk but plus i don't have the space at home and all that sort of stuff for a stand-up no. desk but because yeah yeah because i've got one um that my company bought which is from ikea and it wasn't all that expensive. It was just a bit over a hundred dollars, I think, from memory. I can't exactly remember, but it's manual. You have to wind it up, but that gives you your upper body strength as well because you've got to wind it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it means yeah. you can actually stand up. But there's also other types. I know we had someone at work. Um, yeah, actually, when we were still in the office, you can get um, ones that sit on your actual current desk, 
and just lift up from there. So it's like an attachment or like a, a like a thing you put on your desk and then you put oh. your computer and, or your screen and everything on there and that bit there you can raise up. So your actual base normal desk stays the same height but the, the contraption on top of it can rise up. So there's, there, um, if you Google it, there's lots of different options out there and they're not all terribly expensive and, and it's not necessarily do you want to stand all day anyway but mm. having the option of being able to mm. stand for an hour or x amount of 30 minutes every two hours or something it, it does make a difference mm. so just, i've noticed just, just getting out and walking for 10 minutes on my break rather than you know going and boiling the kettle and having another cup of coffee yeah but just you know noticing just going out mm. just putting my headphones on and that just getting my jacket on just walking for that my break and then come back and make the coffee sort of thing so i've even found yeah. that yeah different yeah yeah but don't forget that even if the company doesn't offer or say that they will pay for it um you might be able to claim it on tax if you buy it i, I i'm not tax expert but it's just something yeah. that you could also check and see if if that's possible okay or, thanks i was going to say or you can can you see this yeah oh no no, no. what uh. <laughs> Right. All right. So <laughs> all let me explain mum's desk. It's basically a, a parcel box. So it's, it's probably about, I don't know, maybe it's as long as my forearm. Yeah. It's basically it just sits on the desk and that's all it is. It's basically just a parcel box. It sits on okay. the kitchen. So you could easily just grab a couple of boxes or something like that, or even like an old container that you don't use. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, sorry. The, the, the one the that I was trying to explain, good. It's called Vari Desk. Vari. Is that from Ikea? No, no. This is the one that's got where you put it on top of your existing desk. Oh, yeah. So it's V-A-R-I D. Yeah, D-E-S-K. Mm -hmm. If you just Google that, you'll see there's different versions and um, types of it and different pricing for them as well, obviously. But there, okay, there's definitely you. options in there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. There we go. Problem solved. Um, Karen. I like the walk-in, Rotlin. That's really, really good. I use um, walking recommended to patients have if they've particularly, if they're either having a wine at four o'clock when we know five o'clock is wine time, or they want a cigarette and they know, particularly in the morning, they shouldn't be having cigarettes and it just to cut down that addiction. So to get out and just walk fast for 10 minutes um, or have a shower is the other, the other thing I, I say to them. And as soon as you start thinking of what you want to do, whether you want to have a drink or, or have a cigarette, just get out of the house. And even just 10 minutes, as you say, um, is enough to build the endorphins to make you feel motivated to do something else, which is not to have a cigarette and not to have a drink or not to sit at your desk all day. It's, it's such a small amount of time. Your body just reacts so quickly. It's fabulous. Um, so, you know, the walking that we can do, you know, who knows if you get out five hours a day to walk five times, nobody will, but um, it's just one of those little tricks that, that you use to trick your mind into exercise is starting. So if you know if you're feeling a bit low, um, you have no motivation, just get out and have a quick walk. And when you get home, you actually feel like you need you want to do things. It's um it's a it's a good thing. So you know even if you don't want to do say your strength training, your high intensity. Even just going out for a quick walk before gives you that motivation when you get home to get straight in and into it and do it. It's it's really really good, but, really good. But what um, what can I say uh, something as well? Like with the motivation, yeah. sometimes what people say is just if you're not motivated, just say okay, I'm going to go out for ten minutes, and then after ten minutes you might be feel motivated to keep going. And if you're not, then okay, go back home. But you've done yes. your 10 minutes, mm. but it might be enough to say, yes. all right, that's not too bad, actually. I'll do 30 minutes. Mm. Just kind of do it. Yeah, what you, you're just going to do you, it. What yeah. you're doing is you're getting over this exactly. feeling of comfort, right? Yeah. Mm. 
body loves comfort. And mm. once you kind of move over that hump or that hurdle and start feeling that discomfort and you're actually what is able to process what it's able to achieve in that time is then you start getting this delayed gratification because that's the way it actually works is delayed gratification comes to complete the task not not to actually start the task yes mm. and I, but i think rosalind's getting to the stage where you're in a really you're thinking about getting into a routine and you know what's right and wrong and what you need to do, particularly if you sit at a desk all day, um, and you're sort of on the right path to getting there. It's, yeah. it's really, really good because, um, you know, if you sit there and you wallow, then yes, of course, you're gonna get up and have, um, you know, half a block of chocolate and a couple of coffees. So just having that mindset to think, okay, I'll get out for a walk which then leads on to much better things because mm -hmm. yeah, a walk isn't enough, but it's enough just to get the motiv motivation going to build on to, to better things. It's, um, I think you're yeah. on the right path there, Rosalind. Okay. Definitely, Thank I like that. Mm. Thank you, yes, because I have noticed myself, as you said before, you know, with your shower or, you know, have your shower or have your, um, walk or whatever it certainly helps like as you say 4 30 when I finish I sort of think now what will I do now and I think well I'll go for a walk now mm -hmm. <laughs> you know will I do have my mm -hmm. glass of wine or will I have my walk so I'll go for my walk now so which is good yeah mm. yeah moving me means motivation definitely yeah. hey and I must I must mention there has been so much talk about our chief health office officer and that's a really, really good point, Trent, that, you know, at the moment, geez, what other messages can he give to everybody and the Premier as well, other than what we all know and has been basically jammed down our throat. I think Dan Andrews has had a press conference every day for 34 days in a row. Yeah, but poor guy it, having to do that. And I know people still don't get it, but no. still now is the is the stage where we've, we're in it. So let's flip it a bit and give people advice on just one little thing, every press conference, on what to do to stay motivated and get yeah, moving. That's a good and idea. Yeah. It's a really, really key point that he is our chief medical officer and he's giving us information on COVID, medical. but he's not giving us information on how to stay mentally healthy. Yeah. It's a really you should, good point. I haven't you just call him the chief it. disease yeah, officer. You need to change the name. It's, <laughs> the chief, it's the chief disease officer. It's not the chief health officer. This is not about oh, health. This is about no, mitigating a disease. Exactly right. Need well, to put Alan, spit. The, spit. Yes, chief health officer has had three days off in a row, which I don't think is bad because they must be exhausted. But this lovely little man, um, Alan, the professor of disease control at, I don't know, whatever new university he is, um, he, he comes on and yes, he's the disease control expert. Maybe our chief health officer needs, needs to be a bit more broad on what he's, um, what he's saying to, the, to everyone really, uh, rather than all the doom and gloom that um, we've been getting every, every day. Mm. So he's, he's got the ultimate. He's, just before that, he's got the ultimate platform. Everyone's zoom, Everyone's tuned in. Yes. Like you can't. Even, like any time, any other time in history, this would not happen. Like no one would give two would make hoots him about a hero. it. No one would give two hoots. Every like other country in the world does exactly the same, and if he did that, it would actually make him a hero as well as a sex symbol <laughs> definitely <laughs> because everybody, everybody everybody is on to him Love now, it, that, now that it's been on for so long you know everybody picks on their clothes and how many times dan andrews use, wears his north face jacket and how sexy brett sutton is and you know uh, all this sort of stuff but if he came up with something different like advising the public on how to stay mentally healthy he'd be a hero 
I'm sure he would. Mm. And it'd get but people they... talking rather yeah. than the media talking about this bloody hotel quarantine. Yeah. But so, that's the journalists yeah. wanting to dig all that okay. up as well. It must be so frustrating. I mean, like, they can only, they try and they do oh, whatever they can and say... So annoying. 